Be careful of your duty to Allah, whom you demand your mutual rights, and be careful of your duty to the wombs that bore you. Indeed, Allah is our raqib over you. O you who believe, fear Allah, and always speak the truth. He will cause your deeds to be beneficial, and he will forgive for you your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and his messenger, then he has truly achieved a tremendous accomplishment. Indeed, the best speech is the book of Allah, and the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the most evil of all affairs are newly invented matters which has no precedence in Islam, and indeed, all innovations are astray. And each astray is in the hellfire, and O oh Allah, save us from it, and O oh Allah, accept our dua. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim O mankind reverence your guardian lord who created you from a single person created of its nature his mate and from them twain scattered like seeds countless men and women reverence Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights and reverence the womb that bore you for Allah for Allah ever watches over you it is he who created you from a single soul and made of its mate like nature in order that you might dwell with her in love. And when we look at these particular ayats, how Allah talks about the importance of, of this dwelling in love with your mates, your spouse, your zawj. You know, so it's important that we recognize marriage as something that's significant in this deen. It's, 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 it's a major part of our deen. We always hear the talk that it's half of our deen. It's half of our deen. You know, again, we have to be of those who prepare for marriage and, and always talk about what about the other half. We have to basically be prepared for being a good husband, being a good wife. You know, Allah wants us to be in healthy relationships. We don't just want to get married just to have, you know, again, lawful sex, as one sheikh calls it, the halal booty call. We used to get the, the after Isha marriages and the people who just want to get married just so that they can have physical relationships. So it's important that we have to start to value marriage as something that is a significant part of the stabilization of a society. We have to value marriage as something that the Prophet Sallallahu encouraged us to do. You know, we don't want to be of those who just be single all of our lives. You know, there were some companions who did never marry. But... They married the dean. They, they were involved in scholarship. You know, again, we don't want to be like the animal who follows you know, our base desires. You know, we want, to, again, to look at the role of marriage as, again, the stabilization in the society, stabilization of the society. And when we look at just general sociologists, sociologists, you know, they teach that when considering the role of the family in the society, you know, it, it functions to uphold the, the major part of the society. It's a, it's a very important institution in the society. It plays a key role in the society. They also note that family members take on status roles in the family, or the, in, in the family perform certain functions and facilitate helps in the prosperity and the overall development of the society. The Prophet Sallallahu also said to be married and extend your family lineage. Be married and extend your family lineage. You know, we have to accept the fact that, for instance, we are a community in transition, specifically the African-American community. You know, they say, some, some scholars say that seven out of ten babies are born in single parent, in single parent households in the African-American community. Seven out of ten. And so we have to look at that. You know, we come out of a society that necessarily uh, doesn't value marriage for the most part. They, does, they don't value marriage. And how many of us in this, in this, in this congregation have Mus of a Muslim grandfather? How many of us have a Muslim grandfather? You know, so we have to recognize that some scholars say it takes three generations for the Islam to take root. And so if we're not valuing marriage, if we're not getting married, then what happens is the children will be raised not knowing about Islam. So you have, I meet people all the time in the work that I do, have beautiful Muslim names and know nothing about Islam. Somebody along the way basically was a Muslim, but they did not stay around long enough to instill the values of Islam in the children. And so they, they are practicing all sorts of things and, and, and even to the point of no practice. You know, so we have to be of those to recognize that being married is an important part of establishing the legacy of Islam in the, in the society. 
Again, the scholars say it takes three generations, you know, for Islam to take root in the society. And again, we've come out of a society for, again, for the past 50 years, the past 50 years or more, they've been devaluing marriage, devaluing marriage, you know, living together, uh, just having children, you know, just, uh, you know, not, not being, um, you know, committed to one another, not being married to one another, you know, going around just populating the earth with, with children who don't know their lineage. You know, so as Muslims, we have to basically instill in the, not only in the Muslim community, but the overall community, the importance of marriage. Marriage of one man to one woman. You know, one man to one woman, a man to a woman. So we have to look at, again, how, you know, people have been corrupting the, the image of marriage as well. You know, we must, again, be of those who value it, and we also must be of those who are preparing for marriage. How do we prepare for marriage? You know, again, we have to become healthy in ourselves as well as, again, establishing the necessary components so that you can be able to take care of a family. And if I've said anything that's inconsistent with what Allah has given us and the Prophet Sallallahu has taught us, I take full responsibility for that. And if I've said anything in which you have gained some new insight, as always, all praise belongs to Allah. La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahu mulku lahu hamdu wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir Again preparing preparation for marriage mentally you know how do we prepare for marriage mentally you know it's about having a level of maturity having a level of what they call emotional intelligence and emotional intelligence that we talk about is being able to um, make the best decisions in all situations, having healthy emotional intelligence, basically a level of maturity, you know, no matter what age, because you can have some people who are ready to be married as teenagers and others, they're not ready to be married in their, in their, in their later years. But so it's about becoming mature in marriage, be, about becoming mature in marriage and about being physically able uh, to be married, being able to take care of things on a materialistic level. You know, do you have a key to your place? You know, do you have the necessary finances to be able to uh, take care of, uh, of, of a wife or take care of a husband? You know, are you ready spiritually? Do you know the basics of the deen? Do you know how to pray? Do you know how to teach your mate the, 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 the basic aspects of Islam? You know, we have to engage also in healthy self-care. You know, we have to take care of ourselves before we bring someone into our lives. If we're not exercising, if we're not eating right, if we're not basically developing a close relationship with Allah, are we ready you know, to be married? You know, we have to, again, you know, be kind to our families because, again, that's the practice. That gives you the practice of, of how you are going to be in a marriage, how you're going to be in a relationship. You know, how are you with the women in your lives, brothers? How are you with your sisters? How are you with your mothers? How are you with your aunts? How do you treat the women in your lives? Sisters, how do you treat the men in your lives, your brothers and your fathers? And how do you treat your uncles and the men that, that are responsible for you? Because I always tell people you get an indication of how a person will treat you based on how they treat the people in their lives. You know, these are some of the things that we have to look at. It's been narrated by the, by Amir ibn Aqwas, he relates that it was said by the Prophet wasallam, be kind to your women, towards your women, take heed. You have rights over your women, and your women have also rights over you. And as the Prophet wasallam, said that the best of you are the best to their families. And he said, I am the best to you because I am the best to my family. And so we have to basically take this to heart. Take this to heart. And again, those single people who haven't got married or if you got married and you may be divorced and a little gun shy you know again don't give up don't give up you know again the main thing and I always talk about the importance of of investigating you know in regards to we talk about the premarital counseling we've been talking about that for years the importance of you know talking and, and I've seen people take premarital counseling and decide to get married I've seen people take do premarital counseling and decide well I didn't like the way they answered all the questions, so I don't think we'll get married. So it's an op opportunity for you to get to know your potential spouse 
on a deeper level. So it's important to, to engage in premarital counseling. And even in this community, we do not marry unless you have premarital counseling. And so people have a tendency to go elsewhere. Oh, no, they, you know, I haven't seen the Hadith on premarital counseling. You know, but I haven't seen the, the Sunnah on that. You know, but again, as the moms and as leaders in the community, we have to deal with the wreckages of, of failed marriages. When the children are, are coming about, I've seen people get married less than a month, get pregnant, and then now you have to deal with, you know, having to, uh, you know, deal with the issue of uh, having a child who doesn't have a, a, both parents in the household. So it's important that we are mature about the, the role of marriage and the importance of marriage. And also, you know, as a community, you know, we have to prepare our children for marriage at an early age. You know, you don't want them to, uh, again, to allow the, 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 the roles or the, the values of the society to take root before the roles or, or, the, or the, the values and roles of, the, of, of an Islamic society uh, takes root in them. You know, because again, we value marriage. You don't want to, you know, coming up normalizing having a girlfriend or a boyfriend, normalizing shacking up, normalizing just basically hooking up. You know, so it's, we, we have to recognize that as abnormal, you know. And the thing is, is that if you have breath in your body, if any brothers and sisters are engaging in this type of behavior, if you have breath in your body, then you're alive and you have the ability to repent. And once you repent, you make the necessary changes in life. You get away from those types of, of, of types of behaviors that are inconsistent with Islam. We're all familiar with the story about the man who killed 99 people. And when he basically was on his way to the village of repentance, he died. And because he was on his way to the village of repentance, what happened? He was, getting, he was given jinnah. He killed 99 people. And I don't think many of us killed that many people. You know, so it's important that we recognize that Allah is all forgiving and most merciful. And so we don't want to basically get into addictive relationships. Because you can get into a relationship just like a person can have a relationship with drugs or alcohol. And that becomes dependent. You know, so these are some of the things that we have to look at and just want to share with you, brothers and sisters. You know, again, we want to encourage the young people to work towards marriage, get themselves ready for marriage, and be of those who are striving to be the best Muslims that we can possibly be. The Prophet Sallallahu has stated, it is compulsory for Allah to assist four types of people. And he says a judge, a righteous judge, a person who gets married with the intentions of remaining pure, a slave buying his freedom, and a haji, one who's to perform the pilgrimage to Mecca. And this is from Ahmed and uh, Tirmidhi. And the law, again, has made it obligatory for assistance for these four types of people. So, again, we should work to get married and value all of the positive attributes of marriage. Also was narrated by Abu Huerta Anhu that the Prophet Sallallahu said, women may be married for four things, their wealth, their lineage, their beauty, and their religious commitment. Choose the one who is, who is religiously committed or may your hands be rubbed in dust. You know, and so these are some of the things that, 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 that the Prophet Sallallahu said, choose people who are religiously committed, religiously committed. You know, we have to recognize the importance of these things. You know, status, wealth, looks, but again, religion, it's one of the most important qualities. You know, the Prophet Sallallahu said to marry for deen. You marry for deen, marry for religion. You know, once you get past the looks, you have to assess the level of religious commitment because, again, if someone loves you more than they love Allah, then they're going to tell you what you want to hear as opposed to what you need to hear. You know, so it's important that your mate loves Allah more than they love you. You know, and then you grow into Islam together. You grow together in Islam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, again, to get married is like a Hajj Akbar, a supreme Hajj. Whoever spends their money for Hajj on the marriage, Allah will also reward him with the virtues of Hajj. And again, this is significant on how marriage is important in, to the stability of the society and not just to get the reward of Hajj, but the reward of a supreme Hajj, the reward of a Hajj Akbar. And again, may Allah encourage the single people you know, to seek marriage and attain the benefits of marriage and attain the benefits of good in this life and in the hereafter.